Welcome all gamers, achievement hunters, friends, and loyal fans to TBD Gaming, the video game broadcasting and review channel where we keep it real. I am the Black Deesh, the jack of all games and master of none. Today I'll go over everything you need to know before playing the game Ravenlock. Ravenlock was released May 4th, 2023 on Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and PC for a price of $24.99. It was developed and published by Coco Cucumber. It's rated E10 Plus for fantasy violence, and it is around 3.7 gigabytes to download. There are 50 achievements for a 1,000 gamer score, and as I understand it, there are some DLCs for this game as well, um, all cosmetic, mostly to do with hats, as I understand, but there is no extra gamer score or anything like that for a title update or downloadable content for this game. Um, how Long to Beat has this rated at 5 hours for a completion. True, achieve, true achievements right there along with it at 4 to 5 hours for 1,600 true achievement points. And this game took me 4 hours and 29 minutes to complete. So I was right there in that estimate almost exactly. Uh, Ravenlock is a third person fantasy adventure game. You play as Kira, a girl who finds a mysterious mirror in the barn of her new house and is transported to an Alice in Wonderland type fantasy world called Dunia. You meet a bunny named Finn who mistakes you for the prophesied savior Ravenlock who was supposed to deliver Dunia from the power of the evil queen. Basically, Finn gives you a sword and a shield and wishes you good luck and tells you you need to go defeat this queen and deliver us all from her power. Um, you meet several others along your journey that help out, including Cammy the Cauldron who sells healing potions, Hedgehog Etta, a store owner, and Enid the Witch who sends you to do tasks and blesses you with abilities. Oh, also, there's a little rat named Decker who is shuddering and <laughs> he, um, he sells levels, so he's like the level up guy. And it all combines for a really cute little community and brings a bit of depth to the game. Ravenlock also is very reminiscent uh, in style to other Coco Cucumber titles, including Echo Generation. Um, I played Echo Generation a couple years ago, and it was fantastic. Um, this game isn't turn-based, um, but I did see a lot of similarities, especially in the graphics, even though Ravenlock is much more cleaner, much more crisp. Um, and as far as style in this game goes, there are a lot of obvious nods to um, Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. So basically, um, a lot of homage paid to that book and those movies. Um, things I liked about Ravenlock, the game design is masterful. The story, the approach, the graphics, the execution, the delivery, it all just comes together very nicely. Um, you begin playing, you know exactly what to expect, and the game delivers on that. I thought it was, uh, it was really good. Um, there are collectible bunny statues throughout the game. In order to collect them, you have to do a little dance, which I thought was an interesting touch. Um, also, this isn't a very difficult game. I mean, I got it done in a couple of days, not to mention there are 50 achievements. So the achievements were popping left and right like crazy. Um, and also, I mean, that comes along with a bunch of side quests that keep you busy. Um, the main story is always progressing as well, though. So I, I never felt like it was a chore to break off the main path to do side quests or whatever. It, it all just kind of was nice and flowy and, and easy to get used to. Um, XP mechanics, death forgiveness, um, progress, progression came all very easily. For instance, if you killed a bunch of enemies and then died, um, your XP was saved forever. So if there was a section you couldn't get through for any reason, after attempting it four to five times, you would have an ex enough XP to level up and do more damage that would then make that section a little easier. Um, I think that's really good game design. And personally, I don't think the game was hard enough to need that really. It was a pretty easy game to begin with, but um, it's just another pro and you know, in my mind that that was designed that way. Um, also, the puzzles are very engaging. They're not so difficult that you found yourself like wasting time trying to figure them out, but um, with enough interaction with the characters and the environment, I mean, the solution became pretty clear and you were able to just move on from there. So, I mean, I'm I'm usually pretty bad at puzzles myself, so it's it's always a mercy when <laughs> the solutions to the puzzles are, are easy to come by. Um, things I did not like about Ravenlock, the camera didn't behave like I expected it to. Um, it's a fixed camera, so even though there's a little bit of manipulation that you can pan from side to side with the right stick, it's um, it's not very customizable, I guess is the word. Um, in a free-moving third-person game like this, I would have loved to have full control of the camera. Um, another con, I mean, it's not, a really, it's not even really a big con, but there were a ton of bosses in this game. Um, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, like I said, but I feel like they came too often. Like, there was... 
the the normal gameplay in between bosses didn't seem like there was a lot of that. It kind of it, it was a really short time. Like I'd play, you'd play for a minute and you'd kill a boss, and then five minutes later, no lie, you would find another boss and you'd have to kill it too. So, um, like I said, luckily it's not that difficult of a game, or else this might have been very frustrating. And I'm sure if I turned the difficulty up on this as well, those bosses would have been a pain. But thankfully, it, it wasn't that big of a deal. Quick analysis on Ravenlock. The storyline is wonderful. The gameplay is fun. Mechanics are nearly perfect. The graphics are fantastic. And this isn't a very difficult game, nor is it a difficult completion. Um, is the game worth the price? Yes. Even though it's short, I think I might play this game again. Um, is the game on Game Pass? Yes. Is the grind worth the gamer score? Yes. I mean, it's relatively easy. Um, and, you know, as far as an easy completion goes, yeah, it's a it's a relatively easy completion as well and would I play this game if it had no achievements yeah I think I would that's five yeses that doesn't come very often and honestly Ravenlock got the best score I've ever given to a TBD review game as of yet and the TBD score for Ravenlock is 8.30 out of 10 if you liked this video please do like and subscribe as always and if you'd like to see more content by me uh, you can follow me at the black dish on twitch I really thank you for your love and support, and, and also if you'd like to see more content by me on YouTube, go ahead and ring that bell so you can uh, be notified of anything new that I put out. I usually put out a video every Thursday, so I appreciate the love and support as well, and I will catch you next time. Thank you.